So far we discussed about how to create power system elements, how to define and edit power system components, how to perform load flow and short circuit calculation. And in this video I will add some additional settings such as bus bars, loads to our previous exercise of the tutorial. Let's look at the tutorial manager. Here you will see the whole database and these are also the contents. This is the activated project. If you click on this plus sign, some hidden contents will appear. Inside of network data, part 1 is open and this is our current working folder. These are the objects that were created in second exercise of the tutorial. If you double click here, a new edit dialog will open the same as was open from the single line diagram. Actually, the data manager can be used for many things and step by step we will familiar with all of them. Let's complete our system. Click on single bus bar system icon and put it here, double click to edit our system. Name it as D2 underline S W A B. Click on type select bar L1 kV and enter L1 kV for nominal voltage. For the substation, name it as station 4 and short name as S4. Now connect it to the middle substation by selecting a line from a drawing toolbox. Left click on the middle bus bar and the dialog graphic of the substation is open automatically. Then connect it to any free breaker panel. Left click, left click and finally left click on the new bus bar system. Connect it to one of these breaker terminals. Double click, name it as L1 underline SWAB. For the type, click on this arrow button. From the select project type, click on line type, then select cable L1 kV. 800 ampere click ok and change length of the line to 3 km no need to change the other parameters for this tutorial click ok the next thing to do is selecting the short terminal element this is used for simple grid node and it doesn't represent a whole substation double click and name it as d1 underline r e u t for the type, select bar L1 kV and nominal line to line voltages L1 kV, then click OK. Now connect it with cable by selecting a line from a drawing toolbox. Double click and name it as L underline SWB underline RT. From the project type, select line type, then click on L1 kilo 400 ampere and enter 5 km for the length of the line. Now connect a load to the short terminal. From the drawing toolbox, click on general load, then connect it at the short terminal at the end of the line. Next thing to do is creating branch to put the other loads for this cable. Select load. Then click here and a new editing dialog appears. Then determine the position for the load. Let us enter 4 km. As you see, here our total line is 5 km. The insert switch for the right side and the left side should be disabled if they were enabled. Then click OK. Insert the lower load and it is 4.8 km away from this substation but here we should enter 0.8 km because it is calculating the length from this branch then click ok insert the last load new position is 4.4 km so enter 0.4 km enable the lift switch option now remove the background
Let us edit our new recently elements. Double click on the upper line and name it as L1 underline tab. Do the same thing for the second line and name it as L2 underline tab. Third line, name it as L3 underline tab. Last line, name it as L4 underline tab. As you see, we have four separate new line elements that were created by insertion of loads. Between each of these lines, there are also created terminals that the loads were connected through them. So we also need to edit the terminal. To edit them faster, let's open the data manager. If you click on part one, you will see the parameters, the name, and type of the elements. As you see, the type of the three new terminals are not set yet. So double click on one of the terminal icon and set the type as bar L1 global. Select the same type for the other two terminals. Double click here and change the name to D1 underline T. This one to D2 underline T and this one to D3 underline T. The next thing is editing the load. Hold the control down and select all the loads. Then right click and choose edit data. Then double click here and name it as L1 and select the type as general load. In the load flow, select PQS file as input mode. And from here, put it in the balance. Enter 3 megawatt for the active power, 0.9 for the power factor, and assume it to be an inductive load. Voltage is 1 per unit. Then click here to edit the next load. Name it as L2. Select type as general load. Uh, input mode should be in P dot crucify check it that this should be in balance active power 4 megawatt power factor is 0 0.9 and inductive load and voltage is 1 per unit double click name it as l3 select the type in the load flow select input mode and this is ok active power is 1 megawatt power factor 0 0.9 and voltage is 1 per unit double click name it as l4 type is general load active power 1 megawatt power factor is 0 0.9 an inductive load and voltage is 1 per unit. Now our system is completed. Let's perform load flow calculation. As you see, the color of some elements are changing. To see which elements are overloading, click on the diagram coloring button. Mark this one if it is not marked. Then click on color setting. In the voltage loading page, enter the loading range as 90, 95, then click OK. Any plus with red color represents overloading. To improve the situation, some changes can be made to the equipment for example we can select bigger cable uh, change the power factor and you can play with the numbers uh, let's select 11 cloud 800 ampere then run
Now you see that the overloading is removed. Play with the other elements if they are overloading. Let us perform short circuit calculation on this branch. To see the whole report, click here. That is all for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click on the subscribe and like button.